How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video we're going to look at how to paint a uh, Chaos Terminator Lord in the colors of the Crimson Slaughter, Corn Demon Kin, or World Eaters. It's basically the same color scheme. This is a very fun miniature to build and the Chaos Terminator has always been my favorite model because it was the first one I got and I like it very much. This video has been made possible by my Patreons and their contribution. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is going to be an unusual way of painting this model because I'm going to paint it in parts instead of uh, a fully assembled model. And for that I use Dragon Red Primer for some parts and Black primer for others. One thing you have to keep in mind before assembling the model is that you have to pin the pieces onto the model or scratch uh, the surface to expose the plastic so that it uh, adheres again. Also you could mask the areas that are going to be glued together before priming but this is what I did and I uh, pinned most of the pieces to pieces of clips so that I can uh, move them around and some of them I just uh, stick to a uh, painting stick with some tape. So if you can see I primed this part of the model in red and I'm going to give it a second coat with Mephiston red just to have that base color well uh, established. Some parts on the model are not uh, fully primed so they show a lot of the gray area still but that's fine because we don't want to over prime so to make sure it has a solid coat of red, I'm going to give the full model a uh, base coat of Mephiston Red. This is almost the same color. It has a little bit of different tint to the Dragon Red. So I want it to all be uniform anyway. So I did give it a base coat. Next, I'm going to use Lead Belcher. And with this color, I'm going to paint all of the places that I want to be silver. Starting with chains, uh, the parts between the joints and all of the places around the arms and weapons that you want to be silver. Uh, you are allowed to be a little bit sloppy here because uh, you have other steps to clean up and paint over other stuff. So just paint all of these parts with uh, silver and move along the whole model. I'm at the same time painting uh, other pieces as I'm doing this. I'm only showing uh, some parts of it. I'm not showing the whole miniature being painted because it's a little bit redundant so uh, I'm moving along. Here I'm using Balthasar Gold once that's done and I'm going to start layering this color over all the places that I want to be gold or brass. This is a very easy step. Uh, you can use a fine detail brush on places that are small and on bigger places I'm using this bigger uh, size 2 brush. It's a little bit old and ugly but it does a good job while on painting larger areas. Once that's done this is how the model should look and here I'm working on the limbs as well in the same manner and next I'm going to move on to the cape. Here I'm going to use a layer of Abaddon Black just to establish a good coat of black just as we did with the body. And this is provisionary to make it the same uh, finish as Abaddon Black because the primer is more matte. Next I'm going to use Dryad Bark and with this I'm going to color in all of the fur in the cape. And I also use this color on the parts that I wanted to be leather around the model. Next I'm going to use Skaven Black Dinch. I know I showed you Eshin Grey but the color I used here is Skaven Black Dinch and this is to paint all the bone around the model. I tried to imitate what the box art uh, was showing and it was showing a darker bone instead of a white bone you can go by either one, just follow the steps on the skull instead, but I went for a darker bone on all of the bones around the model. 
Next, the skull, I'm going to paint it with Rackard Flesh. And just uh, remember to thin it down just as much as all of the other base coats. And I'm trying to cover the whole skull with this color. Once that's done, this is how the model, the model looks. And here comes the washing. Washing is going to be different this time. I'm not going to wash the whole thing. I'm going to pin wash and line all of the details on the red so that we don't have to clean up. This is only uh, a pin wash all over the shadows of the red, but on other parts like the bone, the gold, the silver, and the skull, I'm going to wash the whole thing. So uh, moving around these parts of the red, just trying to, pin to wash the edges. And while I'm at it, I'm also washing the places that are gold completely and all of the other colors as well. If you use a little bit too much, you can go come back with Houston Red and clean it up. But I'm not trying to uh, use a lot. I'm just trying to get the lines in between the crevices. And on places like here on the chain, I'm just applying it liberally. Uh, I'm using a detail brush. You could switch to a bigger one. And here's how the model is looking so far. Next, I'm going to use Wild Rider Red. And with this color, I'm going to line all of the edges of the red. This is going to be a easy step. Uh, as long as you have a good, good consistency of your paint, I'm using drying retarder, uh, liquid drying retarder to uh, uh, extend the life of the paint while it's wet. And the consistency has to be uh, soft and has to be easy to move. If it's tacky at all, it, it won't work as well as you might like. But if it's too watery, it's going to not cover as well and it's going to run all over the place. So you have to be in this middle uh, area where the paint is not tacky, liquid, and still covers fairly well around the model. And here I'm just uh, edge highlighting. It's pretty easy. Some details that don't have a, a clear edge, I don't edge highlight, but some of others I do. It all depends on the surface area and how uh, giving it a highlight is going to impact. So I did most of the edge highlights on all of the edges, and the shoulder pads also had an edge highlight on the edges as well. This is how the arm looks. Next, I'm going to use Fire Dragon Bright. With this color, I'm going to give an extreme highlight to all of the red, uh, using it only on the sharpest edges. This is going to give it a very bright, fiery glow, then it's going to look pretty good. Uh, I've never used this method before. I think this really helped uh, make the red stand out that much more. But I only used it in corners and places that are sharpest around the model. Next, this is how it looks. I'm going to use Runefang Steel to start highlighting all of the silver around the model. This is an edge highlight and uh, you can say a senatal highlight on places that are round. I'm just trying to pick up all of the places and details that are standing out on the chain. I'm not doing any uh, dry brushing at all in this tutorial because I think uh, dry brushing is a little bit more lazy and it's effective sometimes, it saves you saves you time but I'm trying to pay more attention to the detail on this model so I uh, only use the edge highlight around all of the silver areas Next, Sycorax Bronze This color is going to be used in all of the brass or gold and it's going to be as well an edge highlight I'm doing a lot of edge highlighting in this tutorial just to make it look a lot more like the box art on the model. You could instead paint it over all, all of the uh, most prominent parts, leaving the recesses in the previous color, but I like a lot more the result when you only do the edges. Also this metallic paint is a little bit thick, It's I don't know if it's the my batch of paint that I bought but it's a little bit thick so make sure to thin it down. All of the, my paints are thinning them down with uh, drying retarder. Here I'm using Storm Vermin Fur and with this color I'm going to draw lines towards the sharpest edges of the bone. 
and this is a very simple step I'm just using a detail brush and trying to paint the pointy parts of the bone next with Carrack Stone I'm going to give it a second highlight to these parts uh, taking a little bit less area and making final lines towards the edge of the bone I also didn't show but after this I used a little bit of white and I put a little bit of white on the very edge of the bones to make them look that much sharper next I'm going to use record flesh and I'm going to clean up the skull this is very simple, just uh, leave the recesses on the previous color and just uh, paint over the rest. After that I'm going to use Palette Witch Flesh and with this color I'm just picking up all of the sharpest details on the skull like the brow, the cheekbones, the teeth and the nose bridge. Now I'm going to work on the cape. I'm going to start with Scrack Brown to bring up all of the highlights on the brown. I'm using a detail brush instead of a dry brush. You could dry brush this part if you want. But I think uh, picking it up with a detail brush it's going to make it stand that much more. Instead of looking like blended over because of the dry brushing it's pretty uh, uniform. This is going to make them, the highlights look more contrasting than that. Next I'm going to use uh, Death Cloud Brown and with this color I'm going to pick a, sm a smaller area inside all of the fur uh, parts uh, on the bottom part of each uh, uh, strand of hair. This is going to increase the contrast and make it look better. Next, I'm going to use a mix of Eshin Grey and Abaddon Black, about 50-50, and I'm thinning it down with Glaze Medium. And here I'm very broadly defining all of the folds that are rising up from the cape and painting them with this color. This is going to ease the contrast between this and the next color, which is going to be pure Eshin Grey. And it's not going to be very noticeable. Eshin Grey is very close to black, but it's going to help. Once that's done, I'm using pure Eshin Grey and using a little bit of uh, glaze medium to make it not so harsh. I'm going to glaze it over the folds just to give it a highlight. Moving around the cape and uh, applying multiple coats until the desired opacity is reached. Also, I'm going to use this color to highlight all of the holes around the cape to make them look more three-dimensional and also the bottom of the cape I'm going to edge highlight with this next downstone and uh, a lot more uh, glaze medium I'm going to start uh, glazing this color over the sharpest parts of the cape and using it as a very bright highlight on, on the folds the key here is having your paint thin down around one to one with glaze medium and applying it very uh, subtly and if you would like uh, to give it a second coat after it's dry you can go ahead and give it a second coat uh, but this will make it a lot more uh, subtle and you won't hit see a harsh change between black and grey next I'm going to paint the eyes with Calvin Green I'm almost done the trophy racks on the top of the miniature were painted with the ways I paint my Dark Angels and High Fleet Leviathan. Next I'm going to use Warpstone Glow. With this color I'm going to paint the half front part of the lens. This is very difficult because the model became all bulky once I assembled it. Remember that you have to pin it or that you have to scratch the area so that the plastic is exposed on both parts so that they can glue together and I'm going to finish it up with mood green. Mood green is going to be a little dot on the very front part of the lens. After that I'm going to use white scar 
to give it a white highlight on the back part of the lens to make it stand uh, like a uh, reflection of light and give that little lens effect that you're going to see here. Okay, the only thing I want to do to finish up this model is use aerial yellow to paint the eyes of the demon on the, the axe. And just uh, touch the eyes of this uh, little demon head and that's it. And this is the finished model. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It uh, really took me a long time to paint it because uh, characters are have a lot more detail and a lot more parts to them. Especially this one has a lot of uh, little things that you have to work a lot more to make it, them stand out. I'm not used to painting models in parts like in this model, but this model is necessary to do that because uh, most parts are getting on the way of the paint job and you won't be able to paint, for example, be behind the cape uh, if you assemble the cape and then paint. Uh, so some models I do paint in parts, most of them I don't. It depends on the nature of the model. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video and for supporting my channel. This video was made possible by the support of my patrons and I will keep doing some patron sponsored content on the future. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for watching my video and if you would like to further support my channel, you can become my Patreon on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month and you are helping me create more and better content. If you can't, that's fine because you're helping my channel a lot just for watching and sharing, but you can read all of the details if you follow the link in the description below. I hope you can spare a dollar to make this hobby of mine a job for which I can get paid. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.